called me to do, or better yet, what God has caused me to do. We're here because God allowed me to be born because God moves and lives in my life because everything you do should have a purpose, right? Ecclesiastes 3 and verse number 1, for everything there's a purpose. And there's a reason for every activity. So why am I doing what I am doing? Whose cause am I serving? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, why? Because he has anointed me. There's an anointing that Jesus gives us, that the Spirit gives us. And this anointing was to preach the gospel, right, to the poor. To preach, and he has sent me to fulfill the promises. There's an anointing to do his will, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. There's some, several ways that you can be enslaved. You can be enslaved physically. You can also be enslaved mentally. And one of the things that Satan does is he loves to oppress people by the captivity of their minds. Our greatest captivity would be the shackles of our mind. Because when you're shackled there, no one else has to tell you. You will set your own boundaries about what you can do. You will impose your own limits. As soon as things get to be beyond what that boundary is, a little alarm goes off and says, well, this is, I don't know if I can do this. Or why not? Well, I don't know. This is just not for me. But when God allows you to see it, God allows you to have it. He will let you see the promised land, and then say, I'm going to let you see it, but it's not yours. Mm -hmm. Whatever God's allowing you to see in your spirit, your spirit yearns for. The thing that you've been crying out to God for. And what God does is shows you something beyond your expectation. Yes. And that's what we mix up. We want here, but God shows us here. Yes, God didn't say, will you be made better? God said, will you be made whole? Remember? Mm -hmm. God not just fixing, interested in fixing the broken part. Mm -hmm. God wants to fix every part. Amen. He wants your whole life, your family, your finances, your health, your work, your friends. God wants your life to affect lives around you. Yes. You may be just, God, just make my leg better. God says, I'm not worried about your leg. I want your whole life to be better. That's the anointing of God. We're praying for one thing, and God sets us on high for his purpose. But when we see this place, we say, no, God, I, I don't want to go up there. All I, all I want is this. God says, I can't just give you that. I will seek to be God. God is God of all, you know, or not at all. We want a part-time God. God says, I can't be a part of your life. I can't be over here on Sunday. And then on Monday you do whatever. I cannot be a part-time God. We ask God one thing. God says, will you be made whole? Do you want it all? Say, so God, I just want enough, just, just enough to survive. God, I don't know about survival. I know pressed down. Shaking together and overflowing. I know that you shall be the top and not the bottom. Amen. I know that you shall be lenders and not borrowers. Yes. I'm not concerned with you paying your rent this month. I want you to own the house and the house Amen. next to it and the whole complex. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. Is that right? Amen. See, because I'm not sure what prayer you're praying. God, just give me just enough for this month. God says, I want you to have for that month, and I want your children's children to be blessed. Yes. Right? I want you to have an inheritance that you lay down a legacy for those that's coming after you. We're praying God, we're asking God to reduce what his ability is in your life. God's a God of faith. The more we can believe God for, the more can manifest in our life. Yes. Exponential faith. I'm not just thinking about one, God give me a thousand. Yes. Huh? See, we ask God the limits imposed by what? The shackles of our mind. God does not want you to just be free. God wants you to have such freedom that it sets others free around yes. you. Yes. That when you set apart your boundaries, guess what? Somebody's watching you, and they will go where you're going. Why? Because they recognize the freedom in your life. You can't be free when you're going still week to week and struggle after struggle. God wants everybody here to be the top and not the bottom. Amen. You shouldn't have to have anyone else paycheck signed for you. God desires for you to be signed for everybody else. Yes. That you're hiring people in the world. That the wealth of the wicked is laid up for you. That's right. It's for you. And I understand where we are, but we're there. Why? Because of that's how we've always thought. 
I always thought, well, I'm just going to get a good job. God says, no, you're going to have a company, and you're going to help with open another company, and you're going to own real estate, and you're going to build churches, and you're going to allow the kingdom to expand. You say, but no, no, I just want a job. No, 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 you're going to do But we keep accepting what is present and forsaking what is promised. Mm -hmm. The anointing of God is upon me. When the spirit of God is on you, it catches hold of you, and a fire breaks out inside of you. And one of the first thing that happens, you no longer accept your own excuses. You know you can do better. Yeah. When I was in Las Vegas, I was so encouraged because we went to a trade show. And a trade show is where different people that have had products. And, and, and Kim and I, our family has a product that we've been putting out on the market. And it's just our second year of really getting it out there. And it's starting to really catch on. But I'm in this trade show and there's people that says, okay, I started this product seven years ago. And I, and I had to do nothing, and I was in one store or two stores, and now I'm in 12,000 stores. Now I'm hiring all of my family, and I'm having 10 employees full time, and now I'm able to travel and, expect, and do all the things I always want to do. And then one next to me said, we started 10 years ago, and over here we started three years ago, and now we've expanded to the, to the whole nation, and now we're going to go globally. And other ones getting paid royalties and not doing anything, just getting royalties every month, but just sitting there, just giving out ideas. See, God says what you've got, the treasure is in you. Yes. But when you start stirring up the, the fire that God placed inside of you, the God starts feeding you what was in you. Your desire is God's desire. Your desire is God's desire, not who you believe that your desire is. Yes. See, what we believe, we, we, we want what we want. But when we stop being so selfish, we say, I want what God wants, and God's desire for you is much greater than you could ever desire. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. God's desire for you is much greater than what you could ever desire for yourself. You want one, God says, I want to give you a million. But the you can't handle that because we're trying to figure out all the problems with plenty. Some people are more comfortable with poverty because they, they're, they're accustomed to it. They know how to work with little. We've been taught and trained. I grew up learning how to shop for little and how to spend little and how to pinch and save and how to go with broken and bent down and marked down and find sales. And there's nothing wrong with that. But God says at some point you deserve to pay full price. Why? Because I'm a full price God. Amen. Amen. God says I'll give you a new heaven and a new earth. And that this gets promised is that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. That when we all leave this place, God won't give us a used heaven. Is that something? God's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. And we get to reign and rule with God. Scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. The fulfillment of God's promises is in your anointing to do his will. The fulfillment of God's promise in your life is in the anointing to do God's will. Not your will. All the promises of God that God promised you in Deuteronomy chapter number 8... All those promises that you shall have the power to get wealth, that his covenant may be established. God not give you the power to get wealth so that you can just have a little bit laid up. God gives you the power to get wealth so that his covenant may be established. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, he says, you shall be blessed and highly favored. Blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed in the country. Blessed when you're going out and blessed when you're coming in. Wake up in the morning, you're blessed. Going to sleep at night, I'm still blessed. Blessed are my children. Blessed are my children's children. Right now, my children's children are blessed. Why? Because I'm a blessed person of God. Amen. My health is blessed, not because I work out and I eat right and eat a sensible dinner. My blessed because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. And no weapon forth against me shall prosper. That's where my blessing comes from. Amen. It's not because I do yoga in the morning. It's because I've got God in the morning. Amen. When I recognize that I look to the hills, and that's where my help comes from. My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. My help doesn't come from some new book, a new philosophy, a new therapy. All of my help comes from God above. Thank you, Lord. The fulfillment of God's promises is in the anointing to do God's will. That tells us about it in Hebrews chapter number 10, 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Mm. Hmm. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great what? Reward. Your confidence is not in you. Your confidence is in God. Mm. And in the first John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, This is the confidence that we have. That when we pray, we know that God hears us. 
I can be confident that when I'm praying that God is hearing my prayer. And if I know that God hears me, I also know that I have what I've already been praying for. Amen. That's 1 John 5 and 14. The confidence is when I pray, I, it's like asking your parents for something, and you know you receive it. Why? Because I've done everything they asked me to do. Have you done your homework? Yes. Have you cleaned up the kitchen? Yes. Have you done your chores? Yes. You take out the garbage? Yes. Then whatever you want, it's already yours. Amen. <laughs> and that's the confidence that you have. But if I go there and I know I haven't done my chores, I'm looking for the mercy now. <laughs> Mama, can I have? Have you done that? Well, I was going to do it. Well, have you done this? Well, I, I will do it. Well, what about this? Is it my day to do that? Right? Is that still in effect? <laughs> but when you have confidence, yes. when you pray, the Bible says, I know. And if I know, I can start thanking God for what I've just prayed. Is that right? right? That's right. I can thank God at the time that I pray, God, I thank you for my provision. Lord, I thank you for the job. I thank you, God, for what you've stored up for me. I thank you for what you've already equipped me with. I thank you for the doors that you're opening in my life. Lord, I give you glory. And the Bible says that when praises goes up, what happens? Blessing starts trickling down. We've been praying, but have we been praising enough? Have you got caught up with God enough to where praise starts coming out of you? I was doing that in Vegas. I, I don't know. I was thinking about Kim wasn't there. The kids weren't there. And I was sitting there looking out at Vegas and, and reading the Bible. And, and I, I just got caught up. Before I knew it was like two hours going by. And I started just praising God and thanking God. And I'm jumping up and down and giving God glory. And I'm crying and shouting out to God. And I'm thinking, my goodness, I didn't come here for this. But that's what praise does. It's like if you watch a game, right? Watch your favorite team. And all of a sudden they make a play. And you jump up and say, yeah! Now, where did that come from? You inhabited what they were doing. Mm. You felt that you, you, when they did that, it leaked inside of you, and you couldn't be still. You say, yeah! That's what comes out. And when you inhabit God, and God's inside of you, then before you do it, praise starts coming out of you. You say, yes, thank you, Lord. The very same way. Amen. See, if God sees you jumping for the sons and the Cardinals and the Stillers and the and the Celtics, and God says, then surely you can jump for the That's King of right. Kings yeah. and the Lord of Lords. Amen? Because yeah. he knows you got praise. You got it. He's seen the praise, but he just didn't see the praise for him. Yeah. And God is a jealous God. Is that right? Yeah. If he sees you can jump up and praise somebody out there, then why can't you praise the God who gives you life, the God who woke you up this morning, the God who started you on your way? If praise is in you, then praise should be in every part of your life. Sometimes we forsake God, for you have need of endurance, verse 36, for you have need of endurance, you have need of endurance, you have need of endurance. That's something that we all have a difficulty with, is enduring long enough, being persistent long enough, having confidence long enough for God to show up. He knows that we have need of it, have confidence as I'm going through this, but I'm enduring this with patience. Knowing what? That God has already supplied. Amen. So that after you have done the will of God, uh-oh, after you've done your homework, okay. after you've taken out the trash, mm -hmm. after you've read the Bible in one year, after you've come to church like you should, after you've come to Bible study, you see this? Mm -hmm. yes. You see the order that God is establishing in our lives? Amen. God will just give you something just because you have a need. A need does not qualify you for the blessing of God. It's the Spirit of God that rests upon you. It says, once you've endured, so after you have done the will of God, you may receive what? Say it with me. You may receive what? The promise. The promise. After I've done the will of God. So coming to this church every Sunday, is that the will of God for my life? That is our reasonable service. I'm letting you know that. That's reasonable service. That's not the will of God. When you come and show up every Sunday, you can't say, well, I went to church every Sunday. That's the will of God. No, the will of God is that you're the top and not the bottom. Yes. The will of God that you will never be sick the day in your life. Praise God. The will of God that you should be blessed and everything you touch shall prosper. That's the will of God in your life. Yes. So if you're not receiving the will of God, then you're complaining and thinking about and praying for the mercy of God. Bless me, Lord, even though you know I'm not going to read the Bible and I'm not coming to Bible study, and you know, God, that, that, that I'm not really serving like I should be in church, but Lord, I just want you, Lord, I just love you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. 
that won't get it. Tears in your eyes, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, I just love you. Haven't thought about God all week. Lord, I just <laughs> praise you, right? You ever had someone that you may have been dating and you don't call them but once a week? How long does that last? Right? Then when you 